वेलकम टू माई साइट को डायरीज इज द फिफ्टींथ एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन दिस वीडियो पैचेस लेयरिंग एंड रूल बेस्ड कॉन्फिग्रेशन सो आई एम जितेंद्र घानेकर आई एम फ्रॉम मुंबई आई एम एन साइट कोर आर्किटेक्ट टिल नाउ इफ यू आर नॉट सब्सक्राइब टू दी माई साइट को डायरीज सो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू यूर टू आवर चैनल Please click on a bell icon to get a latest update. And if you like the videos, please click on like button. Please share it with your friends and please provide your uh, feedback via comment. So let's start. So let's see uh, what we are going to see in this video. So we will be saying what are patch files in Sitecore, why we need patch files, how to use patch files, features introduced by Sitecore from now Sitecore nine onwards, what is layering in Sitecore. change in the sequence of execution from version 9 onwards so how the patch files get executed from sitecore 9 onwards what are server roles and what is role based configuration so all these questions we are going to cover in uh, today's uh, video so let's 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 move on let's see basic first what is patch files in sitecore So patch files are used to change or add any configuration in sitecore.config file. So there are uh, there are many configuration is used in sitecore. So if you have seen the your sitecore app dot app underscore config folder, there are many configuration files you have. There are many folders and then you have many configuration files. So patch files are basically uh, uh, are the are the patches which can be uh, changed, uh, which which will help you to change the existing configurations. So, Sitecore merges the patch files with the Sitecore config file to create the configuration file that is used at a runtime. So, what happens is that the run runtime, uh, whatever the configuration which you are given, that will get uh, get modified by using the patch file. So, whatever the configuration which you are specified in the patch file will get modified on the existing whatever the default patch file uh, configuration which you are having. Okay, so if you uh, if you added the patch files, then final configuration as you can see in the your uh, your website slash site code slash admin slash show dot config. So if you do that, okay, so you will see uh, something like this on your web uh, on your website. If you if you try to access the show dot config, it will tell you the final configuration which is required, uh, which is needed, uh, or which is applied. on your uh, on your uh, site website okay so patch files are nothing but those are the uh, configuration files which is which helps you to modify the existing or a default configuration so now one question which comes in our mind is can't i change directly the site for config i can easily change the site for config right isn't that a easy way to do the do right it's very easy to change any anything in the site for config then why we need the patch file this is the basic question which comes in everyone's mind okay so you must have experienced that how site for is moving from one version to another version they are changing the version and when they change the version or they upgrade it the every version has something new okay and there are any other configuration is added few configurations are removed okay so if you do the changes in the configuration itself how are you going to handle those changes every time you are going to upgrade it okay and it is it is in the in the maintenance also it is very difficult we have to remember which file what change you have done okay and it, it is also very difficult for the any if there is any issue and you you want to identify the root cause of it You, or you raise the site code ticket then they for them also it is very difficult to find out you are making some changes in your configuration file so whether due to that configuration the things are uh, not working or uh, it's it's the issue with the site code itself it is very difficult and maintenance is become very difficult uh, difficult so uh, all this if you are making a changes in the site code config the maintenance is a problem and also the upgrade is is the problem the solution to this is the patch file okay so what what you have to do it as a best practice is that whenever you you uh, deploy your site core web uh, blank instance vanilla instance you keep those configuration as it is if you want to make any changes in that configuration file then you have to create a patch file so you can create a, now it's a version is the if you are using a old version is a different style of creating the 
creating the structure of your patch file and if you are using from 9 onwards it is a different uh, way of doing it okay that we will discuss in next uh, uh, slides but you remember that you have to create a project specific files on top of your site for uh, patches which okay so there is no need then in that case there is no need to remember what changes you are doing you can override simply that uh, you can deploy simply that patch file it will get override on top of your site for whatever the versions we are you are using okay if you are upgrading also okay. so this is the solution for the uh, uh, patch files uh, uh, is helps with easy man, easy and maintenance of, uh, ma uh, sorry patch files helps in easy maintenance and troubleshooting okay it is easy to troubleshoot also so this is why uh, you should go with a, a patch file this is the reason why you should not be changing the site for config uh, file directly and this is one of the interview question also okay so please remember this uh, you will uh, interviewer can i ask why you want to change the site for uh, why we can should not be changing the site for config okay so maintenance and troubleshooting point of view patch files will help you how to use patch files so first of all uh, whenever you are creating a patch file the extension should be dot config then you have to start with the basic structure in the uh, in the file so if you see the example here you have to the you have to use xml version and then configuration then in the sidecore section uh, of the patch file all your changes should be come okay so you can we can check the existing configuration if you are making any changes so similar structure should be here so all the configuration which is which is used uh, which is which you want to change it it should go within the sidecore config Okay, remember the patch files are used only to change the configuration within the site code. Okay, so if there is any changes in the web.config, you do not, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, the patch files can't handle it. It is only for the site code uh, config. Then you have to register the patch and set XML namespace that enable you to use attribute to modify or add settings by adding them into the configuration setting. So basically, when you are using this configuration, here you have to add some uh, some uh, namespace okay like which will allows you to do uh, the modify or add setting configuration okay so you have to set like patch this one is you have to set and you have to set the set also okay then for patching you have to use the patch attributes okay so patch uh, patch attributes are like patch before okay patch before is is uh, used to insert the element before the specified element so it is whatever the element in which you are added the patch before it will add before that element okay then patch after is be after the uh, that element then you have a patch attribute okay so define or replace the specified attribute of the element you can achieve the same effect using the set namespace also you can use the set also so this is basically used to if you want to update any attribute of that node okay if there is any node which attribute you have to update it or you are setting value which you want to update it then you you have to use the patch attribute patch delete will simply remove that element okay so if you want to remove something from your configuration then use a patch delete patch instead is basically replaces the specified element so if you specify anything then you will replace that with the patch instead okay so this is how you should be using the uh, uh, patch files we'll have a uh, one small uh, video on the uh, some sample example of the patch configuration we are not covering that in this here we are just trying to uh, um, cover the concept okay so actual examples we will we will have a separate video okay now we will see uh, one of the one of the feature which is introduced by uh, by sitecore in, from sitecore 9 onwards layering in the sitecore okay so there are different layers uh, which sitecore has introduced this is one of the feature which i think uh, uh, we 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 just ignore it okay when you move from one version to another version you keep the configuration file as it is right with lower version to higher version if you are moving from 8 to 9 you just keep the 8 versions of files as it is whatever patches which you are you have created and then you doesn't move those in the different layers okay so this is one of the good uh, feature which sitecore has introduced for developer uh, 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 to help the developers okay so let's see what is uh, layers so sitecore load all the configuration in alphabetical order thus we generally add our custom patches within the folder named z 
okay you must have observed that you all you used to create a z folder and within that you are used to add your custom patch file as uh, as sitecore always update your uh, configuration as in the alphabetical order so for the so the latest changes should get updated that for that purpose you the last file should get updated so that's the reason uh, you add it into the z folder okay uh, so we prefix the patch file names with a z and so that the last file is used to override the final configuration from sitecore 9 onwards sitecore introduced concept of layers which controls the execution okay now sitecore has uh, divided all the configuration files into different layers okay and also they have used a rule based configuration which we will see in the next uh, uh, slide okay so these layers uh, they have they have whatever the configuration which you are having there are multiple layers which has been created by the uh, sitecore what are so what are those layers first is the sitecore layer okay second is the modules layer third is the custom layer and fourth is the environment layer so what what kind of a configuration files which we have in this all these four uh, uh, layers in sitecore it contains all default standard sitecore configuration file which are related to sitecore components and features files related to this layer is stored in the sitecore folder inside app underscore config folder so sitecore for layer has contains all the default configuration files for the sitecore okay so all those configuration you should add it into the uh, add in sitecore adds it into the sitecore file so what does the module contains this layer uh, this is reserved for a sitecore and it is uh, contains the configuration files related to the sitecore official module so whatever the new modules which sitecore adds those uh, modules configuration goes into the modules okay files related to this layer is stored in the modules folder inside the app config so app config uh, uh, inside app config you have modules folder all the modules uh, uh, files are stored into the sitecore so basically if you see here both this layer sitecore and modules this is reserved for the sitecore so whatever the default configuration that should go here then you have a custom now contains the patch files you create in order to modify setting the default sitecore configuration files related to this layer is stored in include folder inside the app config okay so if you if you see the old version where you used to create a z uh, folder so i do, uh, we do not need that folder you have you can create that into the custom layer so all the custom files goes into the include folder okay then we have a environment it contains the patch files you create to the configure site profiles for different environments so you have a multiple environment dev some non prod environment like dev stage and uat and then you have a prod environment so those prod related those environment related configuration goes into the environment folder so you have a different configuration for a dev different configuration for the stage different configuration for uat so all those configuration will go in a environment folder environment folder stored inside the app config so if you observe app config you have a sitecore module include and environment folder so these are the four layers which sitecore has introduced sitecore and modules are specific to the default configuration so ideally we should not be making any changes in this two folders okay we should not be adding anything custom is the one which is which is used by the developer so which all the custom patches all the configuration which are going we are going to change should come into the custom patches okay and then you have a environment where your environment specific changes should go okay so these are the layers in sitecore sitecore modules custom and environment so these layers a sitecore module custom and environment these are added into the layers.config file so remember layers.config file is used to define the your layers okay so in the layers like you have you can define like layer name is custom include folder okay uh, is app underscore include folder this means this custom layer will be will be uh, taken from this folder okay best practice do not change the files in the sitecore and modules as i already told you okay and add your all patch files in the custom layer so you should be adding all your uh, custom changes into the custom folder sequence of a patch file execution how the patch files are get executed okay so first your sitecore files get sitecore for layer will get executed then your modules get executed then your custom files get executed and then your environment layer is get executed okay so by default each folder within that each folder files by alphabetical order so first sitecore 
within that whatever the subfolders are there that subfolder in the alphabetical order in that subfolder you, you whatever the files are there to so each file in this uh, alphabetical order so similarly models custom and environment so last one is the environment so environment if you have any configuration changes environment that will get override with everyone but this is the default execution but you there is a something called load order which can which will define if you want to customize that sequence okay then you can use this load order so basically if this is your uh, layer file then you can add the load folder load order here okay so now if you see here i have added that uh, in this configuration we have a load order where we define folder tree type folder add path folder to slash my con my site code dot config file and folder one okay so how does this will get executed so in this configuration first of all folder three with all files okay so if you see first line is a for, for folder three so it will and it is type is a folder so all the file in that folder will get executed from here folder to slash my site config here first folder to my site con file uh, config only will get ex uh, will ex get executed okay then you have a folder one so then you have a folder one all five and then you are uh, then the all the root folder and the subfolder so this is how the sequence will happen okay so load order is basically used to load order will uh, attribute is used to define how your uh, your uh, fetch files execution should happen okay so this is this is something which uh, uh, again uh, as i said earlier this these are the configurations these are the features which sitecore has introduced from sitecore 9 onwards but sometimes it happens that we you, you be move from sitecore 8 to sitecore 9 and we just just do not use all this uh, this configuration but these are the things which which, which will help you to manage to uh, your uh, sitecore configuration very easily it will help you to maintain it and it is very easy to troubleshoot here also if you maintain the if you use all this configuration like layers and the uh, load orders all those if you, you properly utilize in your project and it will, it will help you in the maintenance and the troubleshooting okay let's see now the next topic that is server roles in sitecore so from sitecore 9 onwards uh, sitecore introduced server roles in configuration so basically uh, when we we used to do it in 8 uh, onwards that uh, the uh, server we, we used to have a uh, different servers okay and we define we used to uh, name the, those servers but from sitecore 9 onwards you can configure those you can you can define that configuration itself in the uh, in the uh, sitecore okay so there are different uh, different server roles by default server uh, server role sitecore has defined one is a content management that enables the content editors to create and publish content to a website so it is a content management server where you can user can create and publish the content content delivery it is a it is used to uh, makes your web content available to your website contact so it is basically the external website uh, okay then you have processing it extract the information from capture draw analytics data and transform into the form sub suitable for user reporting application okay so web processing servers are basically uh, basically used where we have aggregation service which aggregate the site for analytics data and then push it into the reporting uh, database server so all those act activities done by the processing reporting uh, uh, server role is pages the reporting data from various data sources such as a collection and reporting databases and use the site for reporting application so it is used for the reporting and then standalone it is used for the de development purpose so, okay a single site for instance performing all the servers role and this is the uh, default role so these are the default uh, uh, server roles which sitecore has uh, defined and in fact you can have a you can name that those in your your instance itself how we used to do it uh, this role based configuration in uh, lower version uh, before site for 9 okay how we, are, we used to configure the server was before site for 9 so if you uh, go to this link uh, in the site core it will provide you some if you go here it will provide you some uh, instruction how to configure like you let's take an example that you want to 
configure uh, your you have deployed the vanilla instance uh, on your uh, one of the server and you want to make it that a cm server so how will you do it or if you want to make it as a cd server then how will you do this so these configurations are uh, here you can see it is for a content delivery how will you do how will you configure that as a content delivery server so on this link there are some sets of uh, instructions are given and in that you will find there is a there is a uh, here you will see there is one uh, ex, uh, there is an excel sheet which is provided which contain all the configuration file which needs to be disabled on each instance side core and this is the manual process so you have to go download that configuration file and then you will see this uh, excel sheet sorry the, that excel file and you will see this set these are the configurations and where it will say that do you if you are using the cd server you want to configure the content delivery server then you have to disable all this file if you are using the c you want to configure the cm uh, server then you have to disable all the file this file so these are given here and these we have to manually disable it okay so it's very time consuming and error prone mechanism so this is how you used to do it 8.2 so that's the reason why initially also i said there is a there are two uh, things which sitecore has introduced in sitecore 9 which are very helpful for developers and we are not utilizing that much one is the uh, layers and another one this one where you can easily configure your servers okay very fast than we, we, we used to do it in the sitecore entire because it is a configurable it's not like you have to go manually and do it we, are, we used to do that in the uh, in the uh in the lower versions okay but from sidecore on, uh, 9 onwards so these, these are configurable so now we will see how this approach is changed in sidecore 9 as a, as i as we checked earlier that the, those are manual process which we used to do in sidecore 8 and as i said in sidecore 9 it is configurable so how does it get configurable so that we will see it First of all, Sidecore allowed uh, developers to define your instance name in the role, the instance role in your app.config itself. So in app.config itself, you can define the role by using this key, role define, and where you can is define your instance, whether it is a local instance, it is a UAT instance, it is a CM instance, CD instance, whatever instance which is there, which you want to use it, you can name that. Okay. Then you can have there your own old role and multiple roles to the single instance. So if a single uh, instance can be used for a multiple purpose like only one you one instance can you you want to use single instance for uh, cm as well as the processing okay so then do you can define it like here you we we are using it for the content delivery and uat instance then you you can define like role define your intent delivery and uat instance okay so the same instance can be used as the content delivery as well is performing two roles content delivery as well as the uat instance here okay then how your your patch configuration works here okay so here if you say i want to add this agent sidecore.task.html catch clear agent only on the content delivery not on the custom code so how you used to do it in in lower version that you used to either deploy the only that file that patch coil on the content delivery and you you are your dis or you 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 have to disable it okay on manually on the uh, cm okay so whenever you do a uh, ci cd configuration in cd used to uh, used to create a different package for uh, uh, CM used to use a different packet per CD and then accordingly it gets deployed into the server and that is how you are used to manage it right or if it is get deployed then you have to uh, disable it manually okay but this is not the case from side for nine orders you can use this configuration where in this configuration you can you can uh, uh, define like a role uh, require as a content delivery so what it will does it it this configuration will get applied only for the content delivery instance so what is this content delivery where you in your instance app.config you must have defined this content delivery there as a name so if your name is the same as a content delivery then only this patch file will get applied otherwise it will not so in this case you will have only a single uh, single build folder or single deployment folder which you can deploy on the both the instance or whatever instance which you are having but your rules will manage it as per your uh, instance name okay so we can not only that we can use a or and not operator also along with this okay whether you want to use a content delivery and uat instance you want this uh, configuration that way also you can do it 
okay so th this way your configuration is done programmatically okay no multiple files are required nothing manually you are doing it so when you develop it itself you configure it you define your configuration as per your role it will get applied okay so this is how you are configuring it so this this is the great improvement which is done from site for 8 to 9 where all the controls are given to the developers who can control those i mean you, you just remove the manual activity which we used to perform to set up the different uh, instances okay so this is also one of the important uh, important features with site for nine from site for nine onwards uh, onwards okay So we are done with, uh, with uh, uh, today's topic. In the next video, what we are going to see is how to set up multi-site website, what is site definition file, how to handle multiple domain, how to handle same domain with a multiple site. Okay, so this is the uh, topic for the next video. If you like my video, please click on a like button, please share with your friends and do provide your feedback via comment. Please subscribe to our channel uh, and click on a bell icon to get a latest update. If you have any question, you can connect me on uh, my Gmail ID. This is my Gmail ID. You can connect me on LinkedIn ID. This is my LinkedIn ID. Thank you. Thanks for watching my video.